Welcome back to the Football Terrace today. Again, sponsored by our friends at Stocks FC. Get that QR code scanned. Get the link clicked. Sign up to your free account now. We're going to be talking more about them a little bit later and how you can turn your football knowledge into money. But you've got to have good football knowledge. If your football knowledge or your eye test is bad, it's not going to look good for you, Bav. <laughs> Only messing. Look, lots of transfer stories to speak about this morning on the Dundee show. We're looking at Nico Williams. We're looking at Ugarte. We're looking at Osserman. Osserman and his potential move to Chelsea. Could that about to be over? And we're looking at Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. But I did want to start with Chelsea. And news today from Fabrizio Romano that PSG have received the green light from Victor Osimhen to negotiate with Napoli for his transfer. And it was only a couple of days ago that we read reports and we saw stories that there was a chance that Chelsea could still get this deal done, that they'd offered a financial package to the player, that the deal was open, that the deal was on. Now, we've had two days of this. PSG seemingly winning the race to sign Osimhen. What does this mean for Chelsea? They've already missed out on Benjamin Shesko as an example. Seemingly not interested anymore in Ivan Toni. Now Victor Osimhen could be on his way to Paris Saint-Germain. I still think look, maybe Chelsea haven't made the offer he wanted. I still, If I was advising Osimhen, it would be go to Chelsea over Paris Saint-Germain. I know there's a lot of turmoil surrounding the club at the moment. I know there's a lot of... They've had two poor seasons by their standard in the Premier League. But I don't believe it's as doom and gloom as people make out. I don't believe Chelsea are this finished over the hill, never never to get back to the top ever again side that many are proclaiming them to be. I just don't personally think it, feel it, or see it. However, this is a deal that's going to cost 80 to 90 million pounds plus. It's going to be huge in terms of the, 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 the weekly or annual salary, whichever way around you want to look at it. And there's still some question marks over the transfer policy and the wage structure at Chelsea. Some Chelsea fans have waxed lyrical about this idea they won't spend above £150,000 a week on wages. We all sort of challenged that and said, well, how are you meant to sign the very best players in the world if you're not going to pay them the going rate? And many Chelsea fans said, well, when it, when it, when it comes to those players... Will, will break the barrier. So far, we're not seeing that happen. Yes, there are players currently on more than £150,000 a week, but so reportedly that's before this policy was put in place. So I still think there's some question marks over Chelsea, but I don't believe they've lost all their pull. I don't believe they're this Finnish football club. I believe there is a more balanced conversation that needs to happen. But PSG leading the race now for another big Chelsea target. Give us your thoughts. Give us your feelings below in the comment section. Now, I want to take a little look here. Um, at the situation with Arsenal. This here, or th this here has been stated, uh, and I want to read this out. This is from Transfer News and Ticks, who says, I've heard rumours we were due to speak to N Nico Williams this week to see if there was any chance we could persuade him to join us. The rumour uh, was we have prepared a Rice-like presentation. I spoke to someone at the club who reiterated we, are, we absolutely love him and we'll take a chance if we get it. Now, I thought what's really interesting about this story, I think the Nico Williams space needs to be watched for Arsenal and for Chelsea. I'm very balanced on that. Yes, Barcelona are still the favourites. So some will say, Terry, he's 100% game Barca. Why even talk about this? Well, that was the same rhetoric as Man United and Lenny Euro. Every single summer, football fans say, no point talking about this deal. Team X are not getting him. And it happens. Happens every year. So to not have the conversation is stupid, in my very humble opinion. There's also the stories that Barcelona don't have the money again. And we know Barcelona are sailing very close to the sun when it comes to their financial issues. So is there a possibility that another club jumps into their slipstream and overtakes them? Yes. Does that mean it will happen? No. And this is about adults having a conversation, not being polarized, not being overly negative, not just looking to, you know, to sort of be edgy online and have honest conversations. And I think Arsenal should be making a Rice-like style offer. I think Chelsea should be making a big offer. Don't just let Barcelona sign in without a fight. So what if you get rejected? So what if you miss out? 
It doesn't matter. Who is it that's going to be upset by it? Kids. And no disrespect, to kids get upset by lots of things. My children get upset if a bit of ice cream melts. So why are we using that as the barometer? Adults are not annoyed about their club being rejected. Adults are not annoyed about their club trying to do something great and failing. Because you're aiming for the best. And Arsenal should be all over this deal like white on rice. They absolutely should. So if they get the opportunity, I don't really know what this means. Make the offer. Make the offer regardless and try and sign the player. Now, before we go any further, um, I want to speak a little bit about Stocks FC. Brilliant pa- platform that I'm partnering with. One that I use all the time. Get yourself signed up now. It's so quick, so simple, so easy to do. Here is their homepage, uh, as you can see. Gives you a breakdown, shows you who their partners are. Obviously, they're partnering with Opta and other people. Gives you a real good sort of when a new player is released, how player scores are worked out, which leagues uh, does it support, and everything else in terms of the rewards. And then all you have to do is log in, or you sign up to an account. When you log in, you can claim your free stocks because you get them, and you can get yourself signed in this way. Three IPOs are currently out at the moment. You've got Winx, Investor Guard, uh, and, a, and a few others. But there's a number of things that you have to look at on here. And I'll tell you what my tip of the day is. And I have personally just gone and purchased a number. We have all seen the news in relation to Lucas Paqueta. We've all seen that come out, that he's probably going to play the majority of next season. What is amazing is that his share price took an absolute nosedive when it was thought he was going to be banned for a long time. So his token price, or his stock price, is currently at $1.04. And I've just gone and bought a considerable amount. The reason why is that he pay, his reward per stock average over $1.6. So the fact he's going to get to play next season means there's a really high chance that there is going to be a big return on this investment. So Lucas Paqueta is my pick of the day. If you're looking to invest in anybody, go and check out Lucas Paqueta. Go and look at his profile. Go and look at what it is that he does because I think there's some real, real money that could be potentially earned in this space. And I'm not looking for long term on the the stock price growing and selling it. I'm just looking to make a return in the next 12 months in relation to the rewards. And I think the rewards will pay me back and make me a profit on what I've invested on. So go and check that out right now. Now, I want to move on to Liverpool here. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold is interested in signing for Real Madrid this summer. And I know yesterday, Hussam, and I know yesterday Liverpool fans told me, no chance, no chance, no chance, no chance, no chance. It isn't going to happen. He will remain a Liverpool player. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm starting to believe he's going to go this summer. I'm starting to believe that the pull of Real Madrid, the allure of Real Madrid, the same Liverpool fans that say he won't leave are the same people that say he's the best right back in the world. Danny Carver, how we know he's brilliant, but he's 32 years of age and Real Madrid like to freshen things up. I think Trent Alexander-Arnold is made for Real Madrid. I think he's achieved everything he can at Liverpool. Why would he? I just don't see why he wouldn't be interested and Liverpool have to be careful. Cash in on him now rather than in potentially leaving on a free transfer. That has to be a consideration of Liverpool when it comes to this deal. By the way, he's going to make, he's, he's also a player that I, I've invested stocks in as well. I have invested stocks in when it comes to Stocks FC. As much as I might banter him online, this is the great thing about Stocks FC. What it does, it makes you drop your agendas because you put your money where you know it's going to make money. And he's at, you, you barely see any rewards on, he, on here yet, because he's only just had his IPO released. But if you're like me and you invested early, going to Real Madrid with the amount of games they win, the level of assists that he's going to get, the amount of points they're going to generate, this man is going to make money in rewards. He really is going to make money in rewards uh, over on Stocks FC. So, look, I want him out of Liverpool because it weakens him. I want him at Real Madrid because it's going to suit me and my agenda perfectly. But on a real level, I do believe this is a deal that could get over the line. Let us know in the comments section below. Man United are expected to make a new offer for P- to PSG for Manuel Yagate in the coming days. And this is another one I'm excited about when it comes to Man United. Xerxes, I like. Yoro, the potential is, is absolutely huge. And Yagate, look, stiffening up, toughening up, strengthening our central midfield area, helping to protect that back line. I love the strategy so far. United are look, looking to be able to play out better from the back. 
and defend the back line, conceding less shots, conceding less goals, and trying to become difficult to beat again. And I think that's the first step, and that's the correct step to have. I feel it's much easier to develop your side off of a strong defensive foundation than a weak one with a good attack. So for me, I, li I like the approach. I'm enjoying the kind of profile of player that we're looking at. I still think the fullback areas need to be addressed. I would still like another inside forward or attacker to potentially come in. Maybe even another midfield player. And I'm probably getting a little bit greedy now when we're not going to do that level of business. But Igarte is a deal that we know the player is, is, is happy to join Man United. First bid was rejected. Conversations obviously slowed down while United focused on their defensive reinforcements. United are going to go back in for him. Is anyone had a change of mind on him, though? And I'd love to get some opinions on this. Is he the right guy? Should United be focusing elsewhere? Give us your views. Give us your opinions in the comments section below. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Shout out again to our title sponsor, Stocks FC. Get yourself signed up. And as I haven't mentioned already, I'll mention it again, is that if you sign up today, you go into the prize draw to win a signed ball from Trent Alexander-Arnold. So just by having an account, have a look. Take a look at what your strategy is going to be. And if you've got that disposable income, stick it on some stock. Put your money where your mouth is. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Peace.